we're, we're not we're not melting off the details right because now i'm starting to get scared <laughs> Hey, uh, this is Retroburn, and today we have another Warhammer 40k on a budget video. This time we're going to tackle stripping paint of Warhammer miniatures. But I've got a problem. If you've been following my videos, I've got four now on my new Warhammer 40k, on this Warhammer 40k YouTube videos, you know that I've uh, ordered these Eldar Dire Avengers from eBay. These are pre owned and they've come pre painted and the guy who painted this clearly didn't um, thin his paints, so there are a lot of details that have been obscured by the thick paint job on these. So he's probably a newbie like me. I hope that when I when it comes to painting this, I won't make the same mistake. So yeah, now I have this problem of how to strip the paint off these metal in nature. This this one is metal. These two are metal. Uh, these three are resin, and this one is. I just recently noticed that <laughs> this is the body of a guardian with a dire adventure um, head on top, and I think this is part metal. So, but yeah, I don't think that's this. This doesn't have any veins on it, so yeah, it's excluded. I mean, she is excluded because I just noticed that she has uh, breasts. And uh, so, okay, so I went to the the, lo the local the local malls, and to my dismay, I found out that they don't carry the the what do you call this? Uh, those two those two very popular solvents that Warhammer 40k enthusiasts use to strip paint from their metal and plastic miniatures. So I questioned my my friends who are um for. In, uh, what do you call this? Warhammer 40k veterans, and one of them, one from Raven's Tag Creative Studios. You can visit their Facebook uh, page. Got lots of awesome miniatures there with equally awesome paint jobs. The uh, the owner recommended this one, this product it's called Ta-da Pine Saw, and he swears by it. it. Says that it strips paint off Warhammer miniatures just fine. And yep, I I went to one of my shops and sure enough, they're they're selling these in our city. So I bought one, and now we're going to see if yep what he said is true. Cause no offense, man, I'm a certified skeptic. So I did an experiment. I actually filled a plastic container with the stuff and ordered some very cheap plastic uh, children's toys of um, a, a lo local shop in our local market and I put in several dinosaurs in there and yep they, they've been they've been in that stuff for 24 hours so I'm going to bring that over here and let's see what we have if it's eaten through the plastic or something so I'm gonna put on these gloves and uh, give me a sec while I Get the container and those land before time <laughs> plastic miniatures. So there's, I don't think that this thing is really that corrosive because in the what do you call this? The warning it just says that if you have sensitive skin, um, what does it say? Uh, for sensitive skin or prolonged use, wear rubber gloves. So if you don't have sensitive skin, I think that's fine. There's no warning about fumes, but yeah, this thing does smell very strongly of lavender. So you, so word of warning, don't work on this while you're in a confined space like your PC game room, like <laughs> what I'm doing right now. But yep, I don't think that this stuff is really harmful, except that it's just, it's just um. Very strong. It has very strong fumes, but I don't think it will, you know, choke the living life out of you. Anyway, give me a sec while I get the container. So here we are with the plastic dinos and the pine soil. So let's see if they've, it's if it has eaten through the plastic. Wait, um, the paint out of the way. 
our Citadel and Vallejo ones. Go. Okay, so we have these dragons. So I've actually left this outside outside the house, so I'm hoping that no insects have crawled into the goop. So here we go. No damage. So yep, thank you, David. Of Ravenstag Creative Studios. Oh man, it's tough working with these gloves. Here we go, so all the details are still there. So let's try. These are un unpainted ones, but let's see if the material is, you know, because some Warhammer 40k owners complain that after they've soaked their miniatures in the solvent, sometimes when you when you brush, uh, the, the, the material gets so softened up by the chemicals that they tend to, you know, once you, you brush them, the, de de the details get muddied up because you know they, they 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 start to melt or something like that. But the kids don't don't do this without wearing rubber gloves or you know an eye guard. I'm actually wearing one right now. So, yep, it's still there. I mean the the, the details aren't. Haven't uh, what this what do you call this fused together in one plastic hoop. So yep, it should be safe. Although the container did say that uh, you should be careful. You should be careful in where is that? There was a warning about copper and aluminum. Not re recommended. For or use full strength on copper or aluminum. So this isn't copper or aluminum, right? These are... I, I think these are made of future? I'm not, I'm not too sure. But yeah, in you go. In you go. Wait, let's get these out of here. Get this plastic thing of magics out of here. Reserved for Eldar only. <laughs> Big Brother is evicting all these from the Big Brother house. You have survived the warp, my friends. Oh, yeah, there's an insect right there. I think it's a gnat or a fly. Oh, Jesus. I hope it's not a fly. That would be disgusting. Yeah, because I was thinking of um, putting it inside one of our storage rooms, but the everything was starting to smell of lavender. So I had to get it out of the house. The, the, the stench of lavender is, is strong. Like, even if I put this on the second floor, when I... When we were watching TV upstairs, uh, you can smell the lavender. So in the end, I had to put a shoebox on top of this one. Go. Oh, man. Zero dexterity with my... Uh, looks like some... Exodite world terrain right here. The purple swamps of death. Oh man. Why are you why am I doing this? Because I want to make this my thumbnail for this video. There you go. I'm I'm not going to touch um the other sniper because if you've watched my uh, unboxing Eldari Rangers video, he's kind of painted by a pro, like the guy knows what he's doing. It's, it's very well painted, and I don't want to touch him. Except maybe if I can get uh, my hands on a complete set of Citadel paints, because I want to paint these guys blue and yellow for the you know E and N color. And I know it's it's you know oh, but it's 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 Camellia line cloak. It's supposed to be 
supposed to be what what do you call this it's supposed to be uh, in camouflage colors you're not supposed to paint it yellow but i'm thinking that in in the lore camellio line cloaks do um what do you call this adjust their colors to their surroundings so i'm guessing that even if you color them yellow if these snipers go on a mission you know they, if they activate it or what do you call it how do you that with camellio line cloak the color should change to match their surroundings. So there you go. I'm going to make this my thumbnail for this vid. Woo. Look at them. Alright. Now we're going to tip them over. And we are going to leave them for maybe, I don't know, 15 minutes. So I think as you can see, the, the, the paint is starting to melt. Because some of it is rubbing off on... There you go, the, the green is coming off. Yeah, they should work fine. We're going to leave them for, I don't know, an hour? No, I haven't really asked my friends. But I hope that the metal won't react to... This stuff, because if so, it's going to be bye-bye... Eldar Ranger. So let's leave them there to soak for a bit. As you can see, there are now swirls of green in the in the stuff. It's doing its thing already. But anyway, yeah. So I I leave this for maybe an hour, and I'll see you later. So cutting the video in three, two, one. Okay, so not one but two hours have passed. So I was working on several articles. Uh, I write and edit for a living. I kind of got busy and forget about these. So two hours have passed and let's see. Okay, the, the paint is still there. But if you rub... I just noticed that the paint was so thick that... I actually, after, after about 15 minutes of soaking them, I actually um, rubbed some of the paint off, and it did, it does, just as you can see here, it does melt the paint off these Warhammer miniatures. And I can see that the paint was so thick that it obscured, it obscured some of the details, right? There, there's an Elder Rune, I couldn't see that before, when these things first arrived, but I was kind of surprised that uh, that's how thick the paint was. But anyway, if we just, you know, rub a bit like that. So you can see here that the paint is going off, coming off. So yep, this is, this is, uh, the, the stuff is very uh, successful in stripping paint off from Warhammer Miniatures, even this one. And as you can see here, the, the black is coming off. So, yeah, this is Pine Saw, recommended by my friend at Ravenstag Creative Studios. And like I've said, you can see his awesome paint job. He does that for, not, not for a living, I think it's on, on the, just on this, just this, what do you call this, moonlighting? Is that the term? This is sideline, but yes, yeah, it's, it's very awesome at doing at painting miniatures. So let's just brush some of these off. I'm not going to do a thorough job of this, it's just to show you guys how the paint comes off. But after this, I'm going to the bathroom and finish finish the deed. Oh man, that sounds wrong. Finish brush brushing off this paint there rather than here because I'm afraid it might you know get 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 everywhere in my PC game room. Then my razor razor siren microphone might get damaged. I'm not really brushing full tilt. Just showing you guys how potent this stuff is. Well, I should warn you that the the fumes are so bad, <laughs> but I don't think it's dangerous because there's no um, warning about. Inhaling the fumes it just says that if you have sensitive skin, you should wear gloves. I don't even have sensitive skin, but yeah, I'm wearing these just to be on the safe side. 
Oh, look at that. It's beautiful. It's really coming off. Let's just hope that I won't inadvertently break the, min the minis. Because this is my first time stripping paint off for Hammer Miniatures. Like I said, this is a newbie channel. So my videos are not really guides, but more of a join me as I make my way through this hobby. Wait. Oh, the bubbles are not letting us see. So we're now stripping paint off plastic miniatures. This is a plastic one, along with the other Dire Avengers. There are three there, in there. And at voila, really just the paint does come off. And have we managed to melt off the, the details? Nope, I, I don't think so. Wait, did, did we? Wait, give me a sec. Let's start with uh, the plastic rifle. And... Yep, we're, we're not... We're not melting off the details, right? Because now I'm starting to get scared. Yep, the details are still there. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and finish this in the, the bathroom. But first off, we're going to brush some of these paints. We're going to we're stripping paint off a metal miniature. So this is a Warhammer 40k Eldari Ranger miniature that I ordered from eBay, and the paint job is just horrid. We're trying to see if Pine Sol is an effective paint remover, and so far it's doing a fine job, but I've yet to. S uh, I mean, what do you call this? I want to see if it's going to melt off the metal or the plastic. The will the fine details come off as we brush these, as we, as we strip paint off these miniatures? see through the bubbles there you go yeah the details are still there it's not it's not it's not burning through the stuff where's that Eldari dire Avenger with the rune on his back there's one with the this one okay we're going to do some very aggressive brushing and see if we're going to Scrub off the, the the rune, because that's what I'm afraid of. If the this, if the solvent is too strong, it might turn the plastic into goop, and you know, maybe not break the material outright, but maybe it will start to the detail might start to blur.
And yeah, I think it's still, still there. If the detail is still there. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and brush this in the bathroom and then I'll get back to you. So these are the results of my little experiment, so I had to stop because uh, yeah, the bend was coming off easily, but then I've noticed that I think I'm starting to lose definition. So I just stopped because I thought that maybe I was starting to melt the plastic. But my wife saw it and we had a little argument because she said there's nothing happening. And in truth, she's right, you know, the, 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 there's still enough detail in the shuriken, the Avenger shuriken pistol right here. But I had to stop because I noticed that in one of the figures... The ammo pack has started to fuse together with the backside, as you can see here. You see that? It started to melt, but now I'm not too sure if maybe I've I've I did not dilute enough of the pine saw, or maybe I brushed too hard. But I think yeah, that yeah, this I think this is the 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 solution at work right here. It's starting to fuse. If you can see here, this is an unpainted pre-owned. Um, Exarch. As you can see here, the, the, the detail right there is, there's a clear delineation, but here, as you can see there, there's uh, the, the, what do you call this, what, what is that, the ammo pack? It's starting to fuse together with the entire backside of this Eldar, so I had to stop. But anyway, what I did was, I, d I diluted the solution with another cup of water and then I dunk the the metal one which was still showing I, I I mean I brushed that one and the its definition wasn't wasn't altered in in any way so I figured that it's safe to dunk it in for another I don't know eight hours or so but the other one the plastic one I committed his his soul to slanesh and let's see in another 12 hours if the paint will come off without me brushing it off so we'll see how that goes but anyway, for part one, this has been a fairly, I think, a failed experiment because my models are starting to lose definition. Even though my wife said that um, they're not, they're still fine. But maybe, maybe this fuse thing right here has been that way since I, I ordered it. Because truth to tell, I did not check every nook and cranny of my of my figures. So maybe the the previous owner, I mean. Maybe the thing melted in with its time with the previous owner, so maybe that's just that. Because I've also brushed here with the shuriken catapult, and it's still fine. It's still there, okay? Uh, it's still there, but uh, I just noticed that uh, their heads are starting to lose definition. But I don't know. Maybe it's because uh, they they were losing paint that I was starting to see that the bl the the lines were starting to blur together. Maybe that that could be it. But anyway, I stopped, and yeah, I'm stopping part, this is going to be part one of this little experiment. So in part two, I'm going to um, make that video uh, 12 hours from now, and let's see how, how that goes. If the diluted solution will strip off the paint of that miniature without destroying the miniature itself. Anyway, if, if it does, I can still order another... Uh, Eldari Dire Avenger off eBay, so that's not a problem. It's not the end of the world, except that I will have to wait another month for that one to come in. But yeah, uh, I had to stop these. The Shuriken catapults are okay. I, I brushed it. I, I brushed it here, but I just noticed that this one still has that fine triangular detail right here, and this one doesn't have any. So now I can't figure out uh, if if it's because of my brushing or maybe it did come this in this condition so, so but yeah I had to stop uh, the, the camera can zoom into his eyes so but I think they're still fine at this point but yeah I, I just had to cease brushing in fear of obliterating all the details because I got scared when uh, even this rune started losing definition, but may but I don't know. Maybe it's because I was stripping off the paint, and now I can see it for all the the white. So the details are all starting to come apart. But this one definitely, as I've said, this one has started to fuse together. But 
Now I'm not too sure if it's my fault or if it's the, the previous owner's fault. But yeah, see you in part 2. So if, you've, if you like this video, if you like me fumbling around with this hobby, um, I'm an I'm a ultra newbie in the world of Warhammer. Please like, share my video, comment, like, subscribe. So this has been Retroburn. And if you just seen my stripping paints off Warhammer miniatures video, so stay cool, stay frosty.